hello and welcome again to Not Fake News. Don't forget to share, subscribe, smash that like button like Hillary does blackberries. We have a bunch of breaking stories for you right now. But first, cartoon by Bronco. I want a nuke-free Iran. Destroy ISIS. Repeal Obama. Care. Really? Border security. Better trade deals. A new sled. Even Santa likes Trump. See? So we have a bunch of breaking stories right now. So let's do this first. Look who may be running for Senate. Uh-oh, the climate change crowd isn't going to like this analysis. Paul Ryan just released a statement on Fox News. Is it that he's going to run for Senate? Hmm. <laughs> Look what the U.S. just shot down. And well, well, well. Look what was just discovered about the death of the Muslim teen. Blamed on Trump. And finally, DNC gets sued by its own donors. <sighs> we knew that was coming. So let's get right into this. Look who may be running for Senate. Fox News, Eric Bowling announced on Monday that he is considering a run for Senate. That's awesome. DailyCaller.com, Fox News, Eric Bowling announced Monday that he's considering running for the set for senator. Bowling just signed a three-year contract at Fox, but when the lights go down on the TV career, he wants to challenge an incumbent Republican senator. In a southern state, according to Politico, Bowling's contract with Fox would postpone his possible Senate run, but he is keeping his options open. He would not confirm which specific state he would run in, when he would run, or who he would want to run against. Throughout the interview, Bowling continued to uh, back President Trump and his current administration, but criticized candidates who run as Republicans simply to get elected. Mm. That's right, fake Republicans. Bowling's loyalty to Trump recently materialized in a book. In his book, The Swamp, Washington's murky pool of corruption and cronyism, and how Trump can drain it. He has supported Trump since the very beginning and has been known to continuously defend the president on air. Just like I do. Uh-oh, the climate change crowd isn't going to like this analysis. A new analysis has shown that the climate change crowd has been dead wrong in its predictions from the Daily Caller. The scientist consensus has emerged among top mainstream climate scientists that skeptics or lukewarmers were not long ago derided for suggesting there was a nearly two decade long hiatus in global warming that climate models failed to accurately predict or replicate. There you go. A new paper led by climate scientist Benjamin Santer adds to the ever-expanding volume of hiatus literature embracing popular arguments advanced by skeptics that even uses satellite temperature data sets to show reduced atmosp at atmospheric warming. More importantly, the paper discusses the failure of climate models to predict or replicate the slowdown in early 21st century global temperatures which is another oft derided skeptic observation. In the early 21st century, satellite-derived tro tropospheric warming trends were generally smaller than trends estimated from large multi-model ensemble reads, the abstract of Santer's paper, which was published Monday. Over most of the early 21st century, however, model tropospheric warming is substantially larger than observed, reads the abstract adding the model 
Really? I, sometimes I think they put these things in here just so I can't read them. It's my ego, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, it's me. It's all me. Because I can't read this and it must be a trick against me. All right. Craziness. Read the abstract adding the model over overestimation of tropospheric warming in the early... You try reading this out loud. I can read it to myself, but jeez. Out loud is weird, right? Warming the early 21st century is partly due to systematic def deficiencies in some of the post-2000 external forcing used in the model simulations. My God. The paper caught some prominent critics of global climate models by surprise. Dr. Roger Pelick, sir... Senior tweeted, wow, after he read the abstract, which concedes the model tropospheric warming is substantially larger than the observed for yearly for most of the early 21st century. Wow, I'm sorry I destroyed that, but I'm sure I left it. That's why I make it big, so you can read it yourself if I'm messing it up. It's more than a little shocking. Santa recently co-authored a separate paper that purported to debunk statements EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt made that global warming had leveled off. But Santa's paper only evaluated a selectively edited out of context portion of Pruitt's statement by removing the term hiatus. Moreover, client scientists mocked Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz for talking about global warming hiatus during a 2015 congressional hearing. Instead, activist scientists worked hard to airbrush the global warming slow down from data records and advance media claim that it is and was a myth. Santer and Carl Meyer, Mayers, who operate the remote sensing satellite system temperature database, authorized a lengthy blog post in 2016 critical of Cruz's contention there was an 18-year hiatus in warming that climate models didn't predict. They argued, examining one individual 18-year period is more statistical practice and of limited usefulness when evaluating global warming. And I also did a video a week or two ago with the founder of the Climate Channel, the Climate Channel, the Weather Channel, sorry, founder of the Weather Channel, we went on there and completely shut down the uh, CNN or MSNBC uh, host. It was, after hearing him, I knew all the answers about climate control, climate change and how it was all a lie. He's like, you can't say, the, the host said, you can't say that all of the experts are lying. He said, look, about 2.5, $2.9 million dollars or a billion, one of the two, I'm not sure, is given to the, uh, you know, for this particular field. And uh, they're told, more or less, if you don't favor our side, you don't get your money. So, yeah, 97% of them s said something favorable. He, I mean, that's just the gist of what he said to him, to shut him right down. And he's the founder. He's a scientist. The guy, the host goes... Well, you know, I mean, uh, who am I to know? He goes, you're damn right who are you to know. You don't know a damn thing. It was it was one of the worst beatdowns i ever seen. And this guy's kind of old, too. He's like 80 years old, 72, if he's a day old. Just, it, and he's sharp as a whistle. Okay, I'm, that's, it was just amazing. Amazing. Climate control is a climate control. Climate change? Not climate change. Climate change. The whole ho it's all a hoax. It's all a hoax. Paul Ryan just released a statement on Fox News. We're pushing businesses overseas. We're telling U.S. companies, stay overseas, and if you make money overseas by selling something overseas, keep it there. That's crazy. We need to make it so that companies can be successful on a worldwide basis and bring those those dollars back home. We got two or three trillion dollars of, of U.S. money parked overseas that should come back into the U.S. economy, but it can't because of our tax code. So we want to clean up the tax code, and we really believe tax reform, 
getting our rates down so they're competitive globally is the key to faster economic growth. What our goal here is higher take home pay, more jobs, faster economic growth. You can't get that without tax reform. That's why we're really serious about getting on with tax reform. Amen to you. Sounds good to me. We really believe tax reform is the key to faster economic growth. What do you think? Please share and comment. Yes. Trump likes it. I like it. If, is that what Trump wants? Then I want it. Because so far he's been right, right. Oh, he was also right about everything he said so far. Oh, boy. So, breaking. Look what the U.S. just shot down. The U.S. F-15 E fighter has shot down an Iranian man, Iranian made drone in Syria. U.S. fighter jets have shot down an Iranian drone came within firing range of U.S. troops. U.S. reports claim that's right. That is 100% right. Your drone comes near us. It's getting shot out of the water. I'm sorry. I need to see what the heck that video workstation is all about. It's looking really nice. It even from what I can tell has a cup holder that slides near you. Like, here's a drink, bro. I'm liking that. <clears throat> okay. Off we go. Well, well, well. Look what was just discovered about the death of the Muslim teen blamed on Trump. I have a feeling at the end of this I'm going to say, nice try. What's that? 3D stand-in room? Gee willikers. I never said that in real life before. Gee willikers. The moment leftists learn who the killer was in the murder of a 17-year-old Muslim teen girl, they seem to lose all interest in the case. Hmm... Why? Not white? With the red baseball hat on? Hmm. Sorry. We're too busy watching you idiots. Initially, there was an uproar when, the net, the, when they naturally assumed the brutal murder was committed by a Trump deplorable. When they learned the killer was actually an illegal immigrant, their tunes changed so quickly. I'd like to see the differences. I don't know about you, but he's not even trying to look friendly in his mugshot shot, right? That's his mugshot. Beat up on the side of his face. Oh, yeah. State fair. Infowars.com reported 17-year-old Nabah Hassan was killed during an incident on Sunday when Darwin Martinez Juarez drove up a curb towards a group of 15 teenagers who were talk walking in Fairfax County after participating in an event at Al Duls Arena Muslim Society. Oh! I got it. So... That's why they thought it was a, a, a Trump guy. You understand? Because they were in a Muslim society. Torres became enraged after arguing with one of the teens on a bike before leaving his vehicle and chasing the group with the baseball bat. The suspect caught Hassan, Hassan Anan, and hit her with the bat before taking her body to an unknown location in Luden County. Her name is Hassanin. Hassanin, whose body was found in a pond around 3 p.m. Sunday in Sterling, Virginia, died from blunt force trauma to the upper body. Reports ABC News. I said in a statement Monday that they filed a detainer on Torres, a citizen of El Salvador, for potential deportation, and he is believed to be in the U.S. illegally despite of the culprit being unknown at this time. Leftists blame Donald Trump for his supporters for the Muslim girl's murder. I mean, they blamed Donald Trump and his supporters for the Muslim girl's murder. President and co-founder of the new agency's 
Amy Siskin tweeted yesterday, it appears real Donald Trump is also going to turn a blind eye to a white man kidnapping and murdering 17-year-old Muslim woman in our country. Yeah, she, she jumped to conclusions. It happens. But don't tweet it out. Trump's hatred and bigotry are ripping the, fad, the fabric of our country apart, she added. When challenged on why she blamed Trump white people for the murder, Siskind responded by blocking me on Twitter and deleting her original tweets. Yeah, that's a good question. Why'd you jump straight to white people? Is there any answer to that? Yes, blocking her, because there's no answer. Paul Joseph Watson, hi, Amy. The murderer was an illegal immigrant from El Salvador. Are you still blaming Trump white people or nah? <laughs> you know, Paul Joseph Watson, how do you know just what to say? How do you know? I guess it's years of just being you, right, bro? That's awesome. Are you still blaming Trump white people or, or nah? <laughs> or nah? Wow, murder of Muslim girl blamed for Trump. Well, you know, okay. DNC is getting sued by its own donors. DNC is being sued in a class action lawsuit by backers of Bernie Sanders. Backers of Bernie suing Democratic National Committee DNC for fraud based on last summer's hacks revealing systematic bias for Hillary Clinton in the 2016 primary campaign. Oh my God, I just realized why they're trying so hard to prove that Trump and their ha or Russians hacked the election. Are you seeing it, folks? I don't, don't make me say it out loud. So someone hacked into Bernie's thing, right? Someone hacked into Bernie's the DNC. Before, okay, so let me just read it. Backers of Bernie Sanders are suing the Democratic National Committee for fraud based on last summer's attack revealing systematic bias for Hillary Clinton in the 2016 primary campaign. Class action lawsuit, Wilding versus DNC Service Corp, is underway in a federal court in Florida, where it is awaiting a ruling on the DNC's motion to dismiss heard in April. The plaintiffs class Bernie's so I'm sorry, in April, the plaintiffs class Bernie's Bernie donors, who also gave money to the DNC under the assumption of its impartiality in the 2016 primary contest between Clinton and Sanders. The suit alleges fraud, negligent, misrepresentation, unjust enrichment, and a consumer protection violation. Claims are based on the celebrated leaked emails and memos from the Goose for Two hacks last June. The leaks appear to show direct assistance of Secretary Clinton to detriment of Senator Sanders. The novel legal theory is based on donors having been duped by the DNC's claims of impartiality. Attorney Jared Beck of Beck and Lee Trial Lawyers, the firm represent, representing the class of Bernie supporters, spoke with Breitbart News about, developing, about the developing case and surrounding controversies. The entire case shot into the public eye when, according to the note, a notice Beck and Lee filed with the court, their office received a call asking for information about the case from a person using a voice altered device. Right. Right. A quick lookup of the number revealed from a number associated with Congressional Office of a DNC Chairwoman, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. The DNC attorney quickly denied any knowledge of the incident, claimed the number is from an unused office and is possibly the result of a spoofing by an outside source. <laughs> or it's someone from your yeah, it's either that or it's someone from your office in that room breaking the law asked about the call Beck told right back knew that's what Beck said oh that wasn't us that was, that was an unused office in the building here no one uses that's empty see it's empty look nothing in there there's not even a desk in there that's because, you know, you just 
sat down on the floor, made your spoof call. Hell out of here, man. No one's buying it. Hope you I hope they do get sued to, to the everything. Take the kitchen sink with them. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Not Fake News. And remember, even Santa loves our president, Donald Trump. Don't forget to share, subscribe, and smash that like button. By the way, um, when you hit subscribe, you also have to hit the bell next to it, or else it doesn't count. So, subscribe and the bell. And that's it. Share, subscribe, and like. Thank you. And that's right, folks. If you like that video, then you are absolutely going to love all of your heart, the video where the arrow is pointing at. Click on it. See you in a moment. Not fake news.